Namaste and greetings. I, Bhanvi, researcher at INTRI, Impact and Policy Research Institute, Prabhaviva Media and Sandhan Sansthan, Nai Dili, extend my warmest welcome to you all to INTRI hashtag web policy learning. Today, we are gathered here for day two of Careers in Public Policy, an online national monsoon workshop program, a three-day immersive online introductory career counseling and awareness certificate training workshop. Put yourself to the next level, learn, interact, and discuss with the top experts in the field. So this training program is organized by the INPRI as a unique initiative for career counseling. This program has an excellent panel of experts who will be sharing their expertise for a three-day immersive online introductory career counseling and awareness certificate training workshop. The distinguished expert panel includes Dr. Nivita Piharan, Professor Mukul Ashar, Ms. Urvashi Prashad, Mr. Sandeep Chachra, Shri Amit Dubey, and Mr. Yasha Gawad. The conveners for this course are Professor Vibhuti Patel, Visiting Distinguished Professor in Pre, former Professor, Tata Institute of Social Sciences, Mumbai, Dr. Devendra Singh, Senior Visiting Fellow in Pre, former National Program Officer, UNFPA India, Mr. Yasha Gawad, Founder, Public Policy India, Dr. Simi Mehta, CEO and Editorial Director at IMPRI and Dr. Arjun Kumar, Director at IMPRI. I welcome you all to this enlightening deliberation and thank you for putting your time, energy and efforts into truly understanding the need related to the crucial role that policy making plays in shaping the future of any country. So before we start today's session, I would like to announce the housekeeping rules. First, it is imperative that you join the meeting on time there will be a Q&A session after each presentation. Share your questions in the Q&A box and not in the chat box. The questions must not, not, not be posted as an anonymous attendee. Ensure that your questions are precise and refrain from making journal comments in the question to save time. So our session, two, for, our session for day two will cover the topics of a bureaucrat's view on the emerging dimensions of careers in public policy by Dr. Nivita Piharan, leadership and pathways for a career in public policy, Challenges and Opportunities by Ms. Urvashi Prasad and AI, Evolving Technologies and Careers in Public Policy by Shiri Amidu. So now I would request Dr. Nivita Ma'am as she is uh, to start the session with her opening remarks. She will be basically talking about a bureaucrat's view on the emerging dimensions of careers in public policy. Over to you, Ma'am. Thank you, Bhanvi. Good evening to all of you. I think it's, uh, we should take a few seconds to celebrate our great achievement in the last few minutes where the Indian uh, Chandrayaan-3 has landed on the moon. I think it's really a time to celebrate. In every country's life, I think there comes a time when uh, we are at the crossroads and then there's a turning point. It comes in personal lives and it comes in a nation's life too. And I hope and pray that today is such a such a um, such a turning point for our country too, and uh, in that turning point, I think all bureaucrats, all would be persons who are looking forward to a to a to a career in bureaucracy in uh, public service will have an immense role to play. Okay, now I wish to spend the next 10, 12 minutes on discussing with you a few things that, uh, that, that really emerged from where we, we stopped yesterday. We talked yesterday about how, in fact, Professor Mukul talked, uh, explained very, very cogently how in India, uh, the public service and the public policy making has to be done by people who understand who have a background in understanding statistics, who, uh, who are um, smart thinkers, uh, who put priority on nation first, on, on um, ensuring that the country progresses. He, he spoke at length on this. And uh, later, Yash talked about uh, the need for ensuring that the projects are uh, implemented in a professional manner. Now, I want to take off by today by uh, bringing in uh, and introducing to you 
a concept which, which is comparatively new to the public policy making and public service, which is really the new tools available for policy makers. It is not, and again, I say, I repeat, yesterday I started my uh, little bit, the introduction with this uh, proviso. Policy, by policy makers, I mean not just the high level policy makers, the ministers, the secretaries. I mean right up to the level of district collectors, panchayat presidents, uh, commissioners, uh, even the village officer, the tasildar, they are all policy makers and implementers, implementers in their in their own right. So I mean the entire gamut of public servants, and I also include in that the quasi judicial, the the the, the public, uh, you know, other services which are there, which are not hardcore government, the even the judiciary for that matter. Now. One thing that uh, uh, I cannot but start by mentioning is that, and I said it yesterday, we are living in times where a lot of new tools are available for policy making and for uh, ensuring that the government policies are actually fruitfully and effectively executed. This is important because. What is the need for a policy? A policy, after all, is meant for a, 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 a country or a, or a state or a group of people within that. It could be small, big, but reasonably large enough for a policy to be necessary. Now, if a policy is to be um, passed by the government, approved by the government, and then you know, policy includes the, the statute, the regulations, the guidelines, the, the government orders, everything. It is definitely for the betterment. And it is meant to be used for the betterment of that group of people for whom, towards whom it is targeted. It could be for betterment of their, of their quality of life, for the, for the economy, uh, the fiscal policy, which is meant to be for the economy, the trade policy for the for India's exports and imports. It's also on a larger scale meant to improve the GDP of the country on at a at a at a reasonably at at a much more distant level. Most often, uh, improve the quality of life of the people. As I said yesterday. Uh, and especially, and I'm here again alluding to what uh, Professor uh, Mukul said yesterday, it is the lives of the most vulnerable that is to be improved. And we go along with that. Definitely, that is the topmost priority. And that could be through better infrastructure, which would improve the lives of not just the vulnerable, but everyone in the country, the physical infrastructure, the roads, water supply, power supply. Uh, the communication links, transport, etc., and the social infrastructure. Um, by, by social infrastructure, I mean in general education, um, uh, health system, etc., etc. So, in in short, they are meant in some way or the other, not only improve the quality of the life of the most vulnerable, but also to reduce inequality. And I go back to this concept of inequality because that is a very, very, see, that can be a very, very serious issue. Because you see, even when the GDP of a country is going up, unless the inequality is going down, it doesn't really impact the people. It, it doesn't impact the people who are the most vulnerable. Therefore, it is important that while we ensure that the country grows, the economy grows, our manufacturing sector grows, our service sector grows. We also ensure that in some way, we also provide jobs to the people who are most vulnerable. They get a, 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 a decent uh, salary. They can uplift themselves from, the, from where they are to a higher uh, standard of life. And as again was mentioned yesterday, they come into a category from the lower income group to the middle income group and maybe higher. Now, 
there are a number of tools, and I would like to mention to you some of them. The simplest of them is the direct benefit transfer, direct bank transfer, direct benefit transfer, the DBT, which we talk about so much. And I want to start off by giving an example. I think all of you are aware and you, you all are from areas where you must have faced floods, whether it is urban floods or uh, rural floods or peri-urban floods. Government has a policy that in order to enable the people who are affected by floods, uh, government gives a comp it's not a compensation, it's an ex gratia to the people who are uh, who lose their houses or who lose their uh, their cattle, who lose uh, their source of earning like boats uh, for fishermen and so on. And uh, this benefit is given to them uh, in order to enable them to recover from the dire straits that they are in due to the floods. And this is not just for floods, for, but for uh, many of the natural disasters and man-made disasters in some cases. There's, there's a policy on that. You can look it up if you want. There's a Disaster Management Act and a policy. Now, what used to happen, and I have seen it myself with my own eyes, the money that was to be given to the families the entire money often did not reach them. And you remember the, 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 uh, the very uh, intense discussions that had taken place, I think almost 20, 25 years back, I think I was a collector at that time, where our former prime minister had mentioned how it's only 18 paisa that reaches uh, the people out of a rupee because of the leakages that happen on the way. Now, DBT is a, is a sure way of tackling that problem. Why? Because the money does not pass through the hands of the, you know, right from the minister, minister's office, secretary, uh, down to the collector, the tasildar, and then, then to the village officer. It goes directly from the place where the money is being, the assistance or the ex is given from into the account of the beneficiary. And therefore there is no question of leakage. Even the bank cannot take anything because it's gone into the account of the person, uh, the, the person impacted. So it's a huge, huge improvement. There was a lot of resistance to it, I remember, but uh, it has not become a part of life. So much so that uh, states who did not do it are actually now getting penalized for not having done it, and which is a very good thing, I believe. So that's a, a tool that was not available and it's now available. Digital payment. The digital pay payment platforms, you are aware, has made life so simple. And we all saw it during the Corona times, how it was necessary to ensure that um, we could make payment without going to a bank, without having to handle cash, where we could not uh, uh, keep cash at home or withdraw cash from our accounts. The digital play payment platform in India has been a huge, huge success. And I don't want to go into it in detail. You all are aware how we have been one of the, in fact, the top performers. Uh, the, the transactions that happen in India are actually, the number is equal to the transactions that happen in the next 10 countries below us, okay? So you can imagine how much, uh, how successful the, the use of the digital platforms in India has been, payment platforms in India has been. Drone technology. Uh, I remember in 2000, uh, it was sometime in 2012, 13, we were uh, planning in Kerala to buy a couple of drones for the purpose of uh, assessing the damages that happened due to disasters for traffic, uh, because I was also home secretary, traffic monitoring, et cetera, et cetera. We had a lot of hesitation. We were not sure whether we should go for it or not. In contrast now, after barely 10 years, we find that every state is going in for purchase of drones and using them for traffic management, for traffic monitoring, for disaster um, uh, loss assessment, damage assessment, and so on. And which is a technology which was never there 10 years, not 10, but 20 years ago. Similarly for um, that being an area which is very close to my heart, which is land survey and land records, DGPS survey, GPS survey, which was resisted by all states, has now become a part of life. And the advantage of GPS survey is that 
nobody can tamper with your land records. All records are now indubitable. Nobody can do anything to it. And therefore, by doing so, uh, claim some kind of a graft from you. Because the GPS-based data is geo-referenced, it is ground-truthed, and nobody can uh, tamper with it because it's there for everyone to see as public knowledge. The social media platforms makes it so much easier for us to reach out to the people, to, to disseminate information, to make them aware, to build capacity. These were not available earlier. Similarly, for data collection, we all know how important statistics and data is, and often data is very unreliable, either because the, the way the, the method by which it is collected is very un, unreliable or because it is tampered with on the way. But now we can ensure that not only can the data be gathered in a more scientific manner, but the monitoring can be done in a manner which is transparent by the, through the use of dashboards, which are available on the table of every officer who's handling it so that they know that if you, if you indicate that today we have had 200 vaccinations, whereas last, let's say last week, the same day, we had only two vaccinations, the question will arise, how is it 200 today? You know, there are now methods of checking and cross-checking, which was very, very difficult earlier. Similarly, for project implementation, designing, um, monitoring, then ensuring whether the impact of a project is really reaching the people who are who are the target group, all this has made sure that project right from selection to designing to implementation and to ensuring whether the output and the outcome has actually happened can be done in a transparent and accountable manner, which I think is a huge, huge tool that is, has come into our hands. In addition to that, there are now uh, technology, uh, technical tools that are being used, like big data analysis, by like AI, which is being used even in the government's functioning. And uh, if, if there, are, there are questions, we'll go into it in more, more depth. So all this is actually doing what? It is all said and done, improving governance. The governance, which we talk about, that, that the governance should be better is actually getting better using these tools. And therefore, we have to use them. And most of the states are going into it. Now, I want to mention as, as, a, as a byline that we should also be aware of the pitfalls. The pitfalls, there are some pitfalls. There are pitfalls for, uh, for any tool, but we should go in with our eyes open. We should make sure that Whatever pitfalls are there, we are able to plug it in advance. That would be the best way to ensure that the tools are, uh, are available to us, in a, in a, are, are useful to us in the right manner. Now, this also has another impact. And <clears throat> I'll go back to the question, some of the questions that were raised yesterday. The use of these tools are opening up new avenues for careers in public policy. So earlier we had uh, persons coming into public policy who were either from the STEM background or uh, from the liberal arts or the social sciences or from law. But now we have more and more people coming in who have background in many of these areas, whether it is in uh, IT or even from medicine, of course, medicine has been there for some time, but uh, there are people coming, on, coming in into the public service uh, from diverse sources, which is a very, very good sign because it means you can then find people who will work in the areas uh, focused on an area where they have domain knowledge. Now, I mentioned how uh, the pitfalls need to be taken care of. Uh, I also, so there are a lot of advantages and positives in these new tools that are now available to us, but there are certain disadvantages or certain shortcomings, and we need to keep those in mind. And the first of those is the need for sensitivity. 
I talked about it. Um, Professor Mukul talked about it. Any public service has two sides. It has the side where the law, the, the, the technology, um, the, uh, the interpretation of the law can be taken care of. But there's the other side, which requires a face-to-face -face, uh, interaction with the person, showing empathy for the person. Uh, I think all of you understand what empathy means. Empathy means to be able to get into the shoes of the other person and think like him. So if it's a person who has come to your office asking that, uh, I, I have been coming to your, to your office for the last so many weeks, um, asking for a certificate for my, um, a residence certificate for sending my grandchild to a nursing school in, Kerala, in uh, Bangalore. And I have been coming for the last three days and I have not got it. You should have the empathy to understand, to get into the, into the shoes or slippers of that old grandmother who has been coming asking for the certificate and what is it that she is lacking that she is not getting the certificate that is empathy now these uh, technologies can take care of the technical part of it but the empathy has to come from the public servants themselves then there is understanding understanding a problem you know a, a machine can understand a problem but a machine cannot always understand the circumstances the, the actual reason why a person is making a, a complaint or a request, because a complaint can be, is most often genuine, but a complaint can also be, you know, it, 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 it could be a fib. It could be a, a created complaint just to create a problem or to create a problem for, for the person's neighbor or to uh, get something um, from the government through fake means. So understanding that is the job of the public service. And that is what these tools cannot provide, which has to come from, uh, from, the, from, the, from the persons who are handling the matter. Now, something that also is important that uh, we often forget is that it is not always the, the case that uh, Every officer has a corrupt intention that if you go to an office and the person refuses to meet you, he is being very uh, cussed. It's not always that. It could be that the person is busy. It could be that he has certain other uh, prior engagements. But what the law requires, and I, I wish and hope that everyone uses that provision, the law, the law requires that even if you are busy or not able to attend to a complaint, you give a reply to the person. You give a reply saying that either you come back after two days or your work cannot be done or uh, you go and meet so-and-so person who will then take care of it. So you see, the attitude, and that is something that I hear so often, that it's so difficult to meet a, a, a bureaucrat or a person who's, who, who I need to meet for uh, redressing my grievance. Do not ever think that you don't have a right over him. You do, because he's a public servant. And therefore, you jolly well have a right to his time. So just as he has a right to uh, attend to his meetings, to go to his uh, you know, other activities, he also has a duty to ensure that your complaint, your grievance is redressed. And I think that is what uh, makes it important that people who are in the government realize that the tools that are available are used in a manner that is in favor of the people who they are serving. The tools are not meant for it to be displayed on the, on the tables of the officers, you know, a huge uh, flat screen or, a, or a, the latest model of the iPhone. That's, it's not meant for display. It's as good as the work got done using that tool. And that is the important point that you should all keep in mind. Um, Bhandi, I think I have already taken about 20 minutes. So I, should I stop here? I think uh, I'll yes. stop here. And I think uh, let's listen to our guests today because they have very interesting uh, topics to present before you. And uh, once that happens, you will have the question answers and I'll be happy to answer any questions. Sure, ma'am. Sure, ma Thank you.
So taking the session forward, I would request Ms. Urvishi Prashad, ma'am. Uh, she is the director of office and chairman at Nitya U, New Delhi, to throw some light on the topic of leadership and pathways for career in public policy, as well as the challenges and the opportunities. Over to you, ma'am. Yeah, thank you very much. And, um, you know, sorry, I'm uh, just joining, um, you know, somehow between meetings, etc., because... Uh, uh, as you would know or you would have heard uh, that uh, uh, we just completed a successful launch of uh, Chandrayaan uh, landing on the moon. So, you know, uh, there's, there's a lot of uh, sort of interviews and things, you know, to prepare for and, and things to do right now. So I'm just, you know, caught up with that. But uh, I didn't want to miss the opportunity to, uh, you know, come here and speak to you. Um, so, um, yeah, so I think, um, um, you know, uh, in terms of public policy, um, I think, you know, the options are, are really vast now and, and they are increasing. Uh, we are getting more and more options, um, you know, increasingly now. And uh, I think you know, it's it's a very exciting field, um, and of course, public policy. Uh, it it is a lot of it is about you know working in the government, um, but not all of it is that. You know, you can you can work on policy issues um, outside the government as well. You know, you can have a very meaningful uh, career in a think tank um, or in a, in a research based organization which gives inputs for policy. Uh, so you know you have to think about policy and public policy firstly quite broadly put it as you know working in the government though also though obviously you know that is where uh, you have the opportunity um and you know at a national level or at a subnational level so so i think you know obviously that is that is something which is perhaps the most appealing or attractive uh, but it's not the only option, you know, that is, that is what I want to say. policy issues outside, you know, a government body also. Um, the second thing is that, um, uh, you know, when you talk of working uh, within the government system, and, you know, I've been working now for several years um, with Niti uh, which is the premier policy think tank of you know sort of policy uh, issues uh, i think uh, you know it's 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 really important uh, to uh, you know understand uh, uh, that It is, a, uh, you know, public policy, it, can, it, is a, it is a very, you know, buzzword and everybody is talking about it. So it can seem very, you know, exciting and, and it is, it is very exciting, but it is important to know that it is also a very challenging space. Uh, things might not always move as quickly as you want them to. Uh, there are a lot of stakeholders that you have to think about. You know, when, when you are making a policy, uh, you have to think about many stakeholders, you know, who will be affected by that policy, uh, who is the affected adversely by that policy, uh, think about. Uh, because, uh, you know, a lot of the times uh, you make a policy, but it has some unintended consequences. You know, it has some, it has some consequences that you never initially thought about. Um, and so that, you know, an example I would give is, uh, suppose you have a policy, which, which we've had, uh, you know, to, to say incentivize uh, institutional deliveries, right? You want to encourage women uh, to deliver in an, you know, their child in an institutional setting. So at a hospital or at a clinic, uh, and you give them some sort of incentive for that. Uh, but one of the unintended consequences of a policy like that uh, in many places has been that uh, more and more women are now having cesarean sections, you know, because only a cesarean section can be planned um, 
you know at a particular point in time you can give a woman a particular time slot and say that okay your delivery is going to happen at this time whereas if you have a natural birth uh, then by definition it is something that you can't you know precisely plan the timing of um so so as a result many women have had uh, cesarean sections which might be unnecessary right so this is this is an unintended consequence of a very well meaning policy uh, and so you know i am just giving an example that you always have to think about the pros and cons the intended unintended consequences the different stakeholders um if you're sitting in the government you have to think about the private sector you have to think about civil society uh, you have to think about the citizens themselves uh, so so it's very difficult you know making policies like i say there's it's 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 you know it's not a science it's really an art um yes you you know you try to have evidence based policy making you are we are now trying to increasingly use data uh, and and you know uh, go towards data driven governance um but even so you know even so a lot of times uh, you make decisions in the policy space which might not be just driven by the data you know there might be many other factors that you are looking at whether it's equity whether it's efficiency you know social cultural political um, you know so many dimensions are there you know that you have to think about so it's it's a very challenging space uh, at the same time of course it's a very exciting space um, and there are many opportunities now for uh, you know young professionals as well as sector experts domain experts uh, to you know work at the national level either with ministries or with uh, a body like niti aayog or then you know you can also work at the state government level uh you can work at the level of districts um you know we have an aspirational districts program uh you know where you can you know work with a district collector or you know you can work with a district magistrate and and try to support them in their work uh so there's lots of options you know there's lots of uh different career options which have now opened up um but it's it's really important to uh you know be cognizant of the fact that you have to you know be in touch with the reality uh, whatever you know sector that you are working in you cannot make a policy if you are not aware of the ground reality i i only started working in health policy making after i had gained enough experience um in india's health sector you know working in india's health sector in other capacities um and i knew the ground reality of our health system and only then did i actually uh, make the transition to policy making and and i think that on the ground knowledge is so important uh, and you have to make sure that you are always in touch with the ground reality so that your policy you know actually benefits as many people as possible and does lit- as little harm you know as possible i spoke about the unintended consequences you know we have to avoid those um so i think you know i think that is how i um you know would really look at this uh, whole issue of you know career in uh, career in public policy and and i mm-hmm. think um, you know as i said you have to look at it from the perspective of that yes you know you might want to work within the government system but you might want to also work outside the government system and that is also equally fine you know because Uh, a lot of the work government is actually doing and you know increasingly in the future will do uh, in collaboration with other stakeholders you know whether it's the private sector whether it's startups whether it's civil society um, so you can even from outside a government body you can actually play a big role in influencing public policy and uh, you know that is again something that you can definitely look at you know so um yeah so i think uh, you know with this i'll uh, i'll just uh, stop here and uh, yeah thank you thank you very much for having me here i think this is a really important course which is happening at a very important time you know in in uh, in the whole uh, you know public policy discourse in india and uh, i think those who are actually doing this course you've made a very good choice um and you should encourage others to also uh, you know undertake uh, programs like this because 
you know this is a field which is very much here to stay and which, which is only going to grow uh, and become more important in india thank you uh, thank you ma'am for giving us an opportunity to learn from you and taking out time from your busy schedule now i would request nivida ma'am to share her views Thanks, Urvashi. Thanks very much. And as you started by saying, uh, let me congratulate all of you on the on today's uh, tryst with the moon. I think that's going to be excellent, and hopefully that will be a turning point in the life of our country. We'll really go higher and higher after this. So thanks so much, uh, Urvashi. I thought uh, since Niti Aayog is the kind of think tank for the government, uh, would you like to uh, mention a few of the areas where Niti Aayog uh, uh, has its focus, as you said, you're working on health. So education, um, maybe communications, infrastructure. Would you like to mention those a little for the for the participants? Uh, yes, sure. So um, yeah, so Niti Aayog um, works in actually all the different sectors, and um, now you know my core area is health. But now that I work with the vice chairman. um i also look at a much broader set of sectors so we work on all the sectors that you know the central government ministries work on that state governments have to work on um and of course a big part of our role is to work with state governments and and you know one of the latest initiatives that we have launched which is a very important initiative where also we are going to be hiring a lot of sector experts and you know policy experts uh is the state support mission um where we are actually helping you know different states to set up uh institutions for transformation you know very much like you have the national institute for transformation which is niti aayog um we are trying to help states to set up similar institutions which can you know be multi disciplinary uh centers of excellence uh you know which can help every state to develop its own tailored strategies and plans you know as we move towards um viksit bharat at 2047 which is the goal that the prime minister has set for all of us uh, that we should aim to be a developed country by 2047 um for that every state in india needs to chart out its own trajectory needs to make its own plan um and that is why we have actually set up this state support mission because you know there's no one size fits all um when we look at india which is such a large and diverse country there is no one size fits all you know every state in fact every district sometimes needs to have a very unique approach uh, to tackling a particular problem uh, so the state support mission is also a big initiative uh, of ours and apart from this of course we work a lot on the data space uh, you know data better analytics for governance uh innovation we have an atal innovation mission uh, at niti aayog which basically helps to foster uh, the whole innovation ecosystem uh, in the country uh, and we work in all the areas you know whether it's agriculture or education um and and health of course i mentioned uh, all the economic uh, sort of areas and and energy there's a lot of work happening on uh, the green you know transition that the, that the country is trying to make um and promoting you know renewable energy sources and so so all of that you know the entire gambit and of course the sustainable development goals um niti is actually the main body uh in the country for overseeing the implementation of the sdgs uh so that is also again a very very uh, you know important part of the of the role that we play mm -hmm. thank you any questions uh, bhanvi yes ma'am the floor is open for questions from the audience yes. participants can either drop their questions in the q and a box or raise their hand okay nagesh ji has uh, asked a question nagesh ji would you like to unmute and ask hello sir nagesh uh -huh. we can hear you nagesh ji please go ahead hello sir yes uh yes sir uh, i am nagesh so i was like to ask the how to be overcome the unintended unintended consequences 
from the uh, any implementation of the uh, policy uh yeah so uh, nagesh i mean there's no magic bullet <laughs> solution like i said you know policy making more of an art you know rather than a precise science uh, so there's no magic bullet solution that you know uh, we have but it's just uh, the fact that we think about you know the different possible consequences you know whenever we are designing a policy or a scheme or an intervention uh, it's very important that we think about you know at least and we might not be able to think of all the possible uh, you know intended or unintended consequences but but our approach should be such you know whenever we are tackling a policy issue our approach should be such that we should try and think about okay you know what are the possible pros and cons of anything that i'm going to do i mean it's like any decision in life right if you're making any life decision you try to think about the pros and the cons um so it should be very similar with a policy you know that you that you try and think about the pros and cons and don't have a unidimensional approach and make sure you think about all the different stakeholders you know who are involved in that policy who are affected by that policy so that's that's what i would say yeah got it ma'am thank you urvashi since i've got you can i can i make a put an idea into your head uh, you know i have never worked yes, in, sure. in in niti or in the planning commission but of course mm -hmm. being having been in kerala in the state and then in the government of india i had uh, i dealt i had discussions with them attended meetings and so on the plan discussion mm -hmm. and so on uh, yes you know, one of the problems if of the policies that are made in uh, niti or its predecessor uh is that uh, they they take all states as similar as all states again you talked about how all uh, same size fits all cannot work but that yeah. policy is not applied in the case of our states in bashi so yeah. how can you complain when you're talking about imr mmr can you complain can you compare kerala with up you cannot yeah. it makes no sense so yeah. uh, you know, rather than um, give them money give up more funds and deprive kerala of uh, funds mm -hmm. in which case you are actually discouraging kerala and not making it better in up either why not oh, yeah. have focused policies for each of these states or at least make groups of them you know yeah. you can have up bihar probably i don't know i have no nothing about this uh, uh, not and have group them up and then have your policies would that mm -hmm. not make more sense yeah and i think you know i mean some attempts are being made in that direction and i i mean like i said you know even with the state support mission we are trying to look at every state individually uh, and and come up with uh, you know policies targets road maps for every state so you know that is that is one effort even in the uh, aspirational districts program uh, if you see we we don't actually uh, you know say that we are going to compare you know one district from one state with with another district from another state necessarily but we are going to compare it with its own baseline you know so wherever a particular district in bihar was in say 2018 you know where has it moved in 2019 or 20 or 21 so uh, definitely i think a lot of uh, you know the approach that we are kind of moving towards is to do comparisons benchmarks which which are more sensible and which is with you know a district or a state's own baseline uh, rather than you know say comparing it across but mm -hmm. i think definitely there's a you know obviously a long way to go in trying to change an entire uh, you know policy ecosystem and and so there's a lot that we can do to improve that um, but i think in many of the initiatives now at least this is i think the audio and your voice is breaking urvashi we cannot hear you i think we've lost her bhanvi yes ma'am maybe the network should get her hmm
No, we lost her totally. Yes, you didn't get to say your thanks to her <laughs> anyway. Hmm. Ma'am, let us wait for a minute or so, maybe, yeah. ma'am. Yeah. But has uh, Yash joined? Not Yash. Who was the second speaker? Amit, sir. I'm just. Sorry. Yeah. Has he joined? Not Until yet. then, we can take the question answers for your session. Yeah. yeah. Yes. So, ma'am, I have one question. Like uh, you mentioned that sensitivity and the empathy are the two pillars for any successful policy making. So, whenever we are making any policy, we usually see that the decisions are taken by the top bureaucrats and the top people at the top position. So, if we are implementing a policy for the benefit of people, or we can say the youth or any particular target group, like for uh, we are making policy for the laborers only. So, if we want to get the better results, I just want your suggestion of viewpoint on the same, not like particular question. Like, if we want the maximum benefits from that policy, isn't it required that we like, can make that policy more inclusive and more human centric? Like, as mentioned by the our prime minister only in the speech for ISRO, like uh, that was a human centric approach. So that could be a main reason for the success of, uh, success of Chandrayaan 3. So for making the policy more human centric and inclusive, like uh, recently Rajasthan government has launched a mission of 2030. So for that policy making, they are inviting suggestions from the labor students, teachers. So like I couldn't feel that there are many institutes or insights where the suggestions are taken from the ground people because policies are being made for them. So how can we make it more inclusive and can we develop this approach in a system? Yeah. Bandi, uh, there are a couple of things. Uh, I think you've got it wrong. It's not, uh, policies are not made in isolation sitting in ivory towers, uh, one. Uh, when a policy is made, um, it has a lot of back-end activity going on. Um, the, the, uh, the district collectors depends on what it is. Uh, the, even from the panchayat uh, members, suggestions and uh, requests come. Those are all taken into account. Different departments give their suggestions and uh, ideas. That's taken into account before the first draft is created. No draft is created in isolation. Okay, remember that. So if you have uh, attended any of these courses, any of these sessions of uh, IMPRI on policy formulation, you would know that there is a lot of activity that happens back end before a policy, even the first draft of the policy is formed. Second, once the first draft is created, that's only the beginning. That draft then goes through an entire process of churning where committee of secretaries are set up, um, different uh, uh, departments, which are the relevant departments, if it's pertaining to environment, then you will have all the departments connected, connected to that subject giving their inputs. Uh, if it's something connected to land, you will have all departments which are handling land and so on and so forth. They would all give their suggestions and ideas and those would all be considered and if required incorporated. Third, you said uh, in a very dismissive way that the policy is drafted by people sitting uh, in the as secretary or minister in the uh, in the in the at the head of the uh, state or the government of India. I sat there, but you know how I reached there. My first posting was as SDM in a in a tiny little place in uh, the the subdivision of Ottapalam in Kerala, in Palgar district in Kerala. So we have risen from the grounds. We have seen the ground. We know what is happening in the field. Why is why do you think that they value our experience so much? It is because we have seen what's happening on the ground. We have met the people, we have walked, we have worked with the people, we have walked with them, talked to them, and then gradually we rise and become the secretaries who are the ultimate policy makers. So these officers, they come with a wealth of experience. So let's not undermine that at all. That experience is, is gold. It's so important because they have not only seen what happens, what really uh, ails a tribal woman living in the in Attapadi in uh, the Silent Valley in Kerala, for instance. Nobody would know it better than the people who are working in that subdivision or the taluk office. And that's where we start from. The fourth point, every policy, at least I would say 90% of the policies, when they reach the final stage of drafting, whether it is a law or a statute or a bylaw or a 
uh, even a, a SRO or a GRO, a government order. At the final stage, it calls for objections and suggestions from the public. It is a different issue that many of the people don't even check and, and give their objections and suggestions. They don't even participate in it. And especially in areas like UP, I have seen it now because I was living in Kerala most, all, almost all my life. And now that I've moved and I'm living in Delhi and NCR, I find that in states like Haryana, UP, the people are just not bothered. So I go out and tell them as panchayat president, as sarpanch, or even a ward member in Delhi, it's your duty to ensure that you're giving your suggestions to any policy that the government is drafting, because you always have a take on it, because you are dealing with the public, but often it is ignored. So what we need to do here is make the people aware of their responsibilities, their kartavya. They have the responsibility to ensure that uh, they give the, they put forth the suggestions and objections before the authority so that those are taken into account before the policy becomes final. Have I answered your question? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma Thank you, ma'am. So I guess there are two more questions from Priyanka. Uh, uh, yes, ma'am. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, ma'am, my question is that uh, while, while drafting a policy, uh, it's regarding the approach, uh, like uh, how do we approach the challenge of balancing a short-term priority or a short-term uh, necessity for that time uh, versus uh, the long-term sustainable, uh, sustainable development goal that uh, we should have or we could have uh, and what kind of strategies can we implement for this? Um, uh, Priyanka, yeah, you, you have a good point, but then, you know, every policy is a balance. You have to find the golden mean, as they say. So uh, it, it, it would have certain short-term impact. Those could be positive, those, those could be negative, and it would have a long-term impact. And there again, it could be the positives and the negatives. It is the challenge, the challenge that lies before the people who are drafting the policy is to ensure that the, that the positives emanating from it, whether it is short term or long term, is maximum, is maximized and the, and the adverse impacts are minimized. Every policy will have some adverse impact. You have heard, you've got a climate change uh, backdrop on your screen and you have heard this perpetual argument of development versus climate change. You know, it is made to seem as if all climate change is happening because development is taking place. It's not so, it's not so. It's a fact that any development would have certain adverse consequences, adverse impact, but there are ways to mitigate it. We never care to do that. You see, we will construct a high rise building in a manner uh, which would not take care of its sewage system, uh, its waste disposal, and then we'll say that it's having an adverse impact. Why can it not be part of our policy? The policy that ensures that any development, any project that takes place in a, in a coastal area or you know, anywhere takes care of the, of the adverse uh, impact. I think it's the way we think of it that our, our way of thinking has to change. That's very important. Thank you, ma'am. By the way, is that a backdrop from National Geographic? Uh, no, I'm... <laughs> okay. okay. That's a good one. Mm. Thank you. Uh, an ongoing South Asia school program we are doing on climate change. Mm. It's a two month long program. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's very interesting because uh, from different uh, countries of uh, Indian subcontinent, a, a lot of climate change experts, including government officials, are also participating in it. So more of awareness program of that sort of activism. We have another question by Asthaba. Asthaba, you can ask now. Oh uh, yes. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, so my question is: uh, When you said there will be um, adverse impacts like uh, long term and short term, maybe. So I, what uh, is your take on the uh, 
fluidity that uh, policy has and uh, what channels does the government or the state have uh, to invite criticisms because I feel uh, policies or any act, any bill, uh, criticism is a very important aspect of it. So what channels does the government have to invite those criticisms and how do, uh, how do they go on with it? How is that addressed? Yeah, yeah. good question. Uh, you know, uh, a policy, nothing is, uh, nothing is carved in stone. So even when a policy comes, uh, in the government, we have a system where, um, I, I mentioned again and again, the impact assessment is very important. So what impact has the policy had? For instance, the disaster management law was passed, I think, in 2005, 2006. And uh, after 10 years, the government did an impact assessment. How much change has Disaster Management Act brought about in our handling disasters? So you see, at every stage, in every policy, the department concerned does mid-course assessment. And when they find that something has not been covered properly or something should have been covered is not included, then you have changes made. And that's how we have amendment to laws. That's how you have amendment to uh, building bylaws, for instance. So that, that's the system. That's the, the, the um, uh, what is the word? That is the uh, option that government has. And uh, it's done on a regular basis. It's, it's always to be done because no policy is forever. It cannot be forever because a policy is a result of the societal conditions prevailing at that time. And that changes, our society changes. So the policy also has to grow, it's something organic. And therefore it has to grow, it has to change, it has to modify, if necessary, it has to be withdrawn. Do I make sense? Thank you so much. Thank you. No more questions? No. Our second speaker is not here, Bhanvi? Uh, no, no ma'am. Okay, okay. So we have more time. So, so ma'am, there is one more question from Shadi. Vashali ji has a question. Sir is just joining in two minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ashali, you can ask your question, meanwhile. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, good evening, ma'am. Uh, so I have a question since we talked about like how policy needs to modify and needs to change. Uh, I want to reflect upon uh, and also understand from your perspective that how do we create a sense of balance uh, when we talk about uh, development per se, like we have seen how because of migration, there has been expansion of cities and uh, there's been like constant collision between uh, people, uh, planet and participation. Per se, I, I would like to give an example with reference to, uh, it's a nearby, I stay in Chandigarh. So there's a dumping ground nearby. Uh, it's right next to a uh, residential colony. And last year there was a fire in that because of that there was a lot of like it was a smog situation where breathing was uh, difficult. Obviously, municipal corporation, uh, they uh, said that we shifted. And there was also a lacking in the respect that they were supposed to uh, develop this MRF plants and uh, they didn't. And after that incident only, they had developed that. Uh, but I kind of sometimes fail to understand where do we create that balance uh, how does government approach this when uh, people, citizens' health is also one of the important criteria, taking care of a basic, uh, you know, a basic service like uh, waste management is also one of the priority because now they are doing legacy waste, but obviously ma'am, that's a very lengthy process. That's not an immediate, uh, 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 immediate uh, I would say solution to the problem of the people. So I want to understand how does uh, the government approach this? Um, you know, government approach, government has approached this by uh, bringing in the uh, Swastha, Bharat, Swastha Bharat Mission, 
yes. where uh, you know it's not just health of the people but also waste uh, toilets etc cetera, etc cetera. and what does it say about waste it says that all waste has to be handled at the local level okay right. and which means that this kind of dumping grounds or dumping areas created are not to be in, not to be had at all delhi has that problem most of our cities have that problem i'm sure even uh, uh, chennai and uh, uh, mumbai have that problem and you say chandigarh has that problem that is wrong it should not happen now that means that management of waste should be the responsibility of the local authorities the local governments the municipality the the urban corporations or the panchayats now unfortunately in our country these local bodies the the urban local bodies the, the panchayati raj institutions have somehow been very weak they have been weak because in many cases they are new they have come up recently and second reason being that for various reasons they have not been encouraged to become stronger and emboldened and uh, I, i'm saying this with a lot of anguish coming from kerala where our local bodies are extremely vibrant and strong and they have become strong because out of the the total items in the in the business rules more than 40% are now delegated to the panchayats and local bodies they are not with the state any longer they plan they do their resource mapping and they decide what is to be done so whether it is waste management water supply um, uh, even things like um, uh, agriculture uh, pest control organic uh, uh, organic uh, farming etc is now uh, the the domain of the local bodies and that should happen in our uh, urban centers so our so called cities and uh, the the mega towns that we have and chandigarh is one of them the other point i want to mention uh, vaishali since i've got this question from you you know the government can only go as far as some length the rest of it has to come from the actual um, the, the citizens and they are also stakeholders and everyone is a stakeholder in this isn't it and they are more bigger stakeholders than government because they are living there they are breathing that uh, polluted air which is coming out of the the smog filled environment so why is it then that when somebody talks of segregation of waste at source uh ensuring that um, you reduce plastic consumption why is it that the people are up in arms i don't understand it's for their benefit you know and you youngsters have to come up with these ideas and make sure that these are made part of our lives and i have lived abroad and i have seen i have lived in kerala and seen of course kerala is not uh, not the best as far as waste uh, segregation is concerned but it's at least doing something and maybe it will get there sometime but places like delhi uh, mumbai they just refuse to do it i don't know why it doesn't cost you anything to ensure that your vegetable and food waste is kept separately in your kitchen and uh, plastic and glass and uh, uh, metals are kept separately i don't know what what big rocket science that is but they would not do it i think that mentality has to change it has to change because ultimately what will happen they will the, the children and the and the old people the senior citizens in uh, chandigarh are having to breathe a polluted air and that's the consequence of it i think that awareness has to come from the other end also thank you yeah i think um, uh, mr dubey is there so yes ma'am yeah. thank you ma'am so the last session of day 2 will be taken by shri amit dubey ji he is a founder of india future foundation national cyber security expert so he will be taking the session on ai evolving technologies and careers in public policy over to you sir thank you so much thank you uh, professor arjun and entire impri team good evening everyone so first of all uh, many many congratulations for reaching out to the chand 
for the success for our moon mission. I'm sure everybody's excited about it. And uh, <clears throat> this has actually given confidence to lots of researchers, especially those are uh, working around AI and quantum. And government of India has put in lots of investment in these areas. So that's why it gives some confidence to all these researchers who were in doubt for making India things earlier. And with this success, I think we'll do something better now. So kudos to all the researchers, scientists who have been part of this. From my side, I'll share some of my insights around AI, first of all, because AI is changing lots of things in India. And there are uh, discussions, there is a hue as hue and cry about job loss and many other things. So I'll just take five minutes and we'll share a brief presentation also. And then I'll discuss the opportunities uh, for the youngsters in this area. And not only AI, because AI is a backbone of many other such uh, interlinked research activities. Anything and everything that is what we are doing today, it is somehow uh, linked with AI nowadays. And this will disrupt many other industries as well. So what all industries will be disrupted and uh, where we are heading to? This is what I, I'll show you in a brief presentation. So I'm sharing my screen and please confirm once you are able to see that. Yes, sir. Thank you. Uh, I think if some someone of you have already attended my last session, I gave some insight about the data collection by different industries, players. And I mentioned that the top 10 richest companies around the world are those companies, those are offering you free product. And they collect lots of your information, whether it is Facebook, Google, Instagram, TikTok, any other game, they all are collecting lots of data and that's why they are valued so much, though they are offering you free service. But what are they trying to do with this data? What are their big vision? And that's where AI come into the picture. Because eventually they all want to build an AI engine, which will consume this information and will control your mind. So whatever you will do in your life, and right now also to a great extent, our mind is already controlled by these players. What do we want to see? What do you want to read? What do you want to eat? What do you want to become in future? Everything depends on the data point. Those are, those are continuously given to us through different channels. And that's why our brain has that vulnerability that we get influenced with those data points. And our thought process are limited to those data points only. For example, how many of you have decided in your life to become prime minister of India? Very few. Similarly, how many of you have decided to have a luxurious cruise somewhere and, and to, 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 to live your life uh, peacefully somewhere in, in, in an island? Because of our data points, we are limited to our the dreams and, and, and the vision as well. And that's what these industries actually wanted to do eventually with those data points. Some of these industries, those are already disrupted. We'll just have a look on it. And uh, we know that AI predict crime in a week advance with 90% accuracy. So government of US, they have already developed a tool which analyzes your social media activities on different platforms and can predict a crime in a week advance. Chinese researchers claim to have made AI system that can read minds and that could be used to test loyalty. So it's very dangerous and it is actually uh, <clears throat> interfering the human evolution as well. So AI evolution happened, started with reactive machines with no memory. Then we reached to AI machines with limited memory. Now we have developed theory of mind, which is GPT, generative pre-trained transformers. They can create things. They can write poems. They can write stories. They can write uh, articles and, and make create films, videos, graphics. They can create beautiful uh, artifacts and all. 
And that's where we have already touched to. I'm sure many of you have already experienced chat GPT and BARD and many other such large language models. Before chat GPT or before generative pre trained transformers, this was not experienced. And that's why this will disrupt many more industries, many other industries. Beyond that, in future, we are expecting, or they, though they, they, it is a debatable thing, and many people believe that AI will never become self-conscious or self-aware, but there is there are people, those do believe that AI may become self-aware and self-conscious, and that will be the fourth stage of AI eventually. So this is something which uh, is uh, in discussion, and we will discuss it at the later stage about singularity and what is singularity and how it will change the human life. It is very popular, as we know. It took only five days to reach to 1 million users for ChatGPT. And for others, it was years and many, many months. One more interesting aspect that you should know about Turing test, that when you build an AI solution for any industry, for any organization, and if you want to test it, whether it is actually the perfect design or uh, it, 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 it is as per uh, the current standards, then you should actually test it through Turing uh, uh, framework, which is like this. You have, you have to run this complete model in a system and there should be a human being and some other part. And then as an interrogator, you should interact with both of these entities. And if you cannot differentiate which is machine and which is human for that particular kind of AI implementation, that means that AI model has passed the Turing test. So chat GPT has actually passed the Turing test, though it could not pass UPSC in India and it could pass uh, law, lawyer test in US. But it is evolving. It is evolving and eventually it will be, uh, it will be much more effective and efficient. Excuse you, me, you? sir. Yes? Sorry to disturb you, sir. Are you changing the slides? We are able to see only four. Uh, now oh, it's yeah. unique AI apps. Okay. Well, slide. Thank you. Are you able to see that? Unique AI yes, apps? Sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Full screen calm nakar. Sir, maybe you can stop share and then share again. So, okay, but calm. Okay, no, no, I see this. I'm showing unique AI. Okay, okay. If I change the screen, I'll speak. Yeah, I'll change the screen. Okay, okay. Sorry. So, these are some unique AI applications hai, that you could notice. Uh, AI testing beer or better brewing and drinking industry. Robotic buzzing bees helping pollinate crops. AI perfumes. AI food. People are creating AI generated food where mix and match of different ingredients will be used and will be tried out. So there are restaurants those are offering AI generated food. Music industry and AI, so there are tools like Newbert and all. You can create any kind of music through that AI. Neural net writing fiction that you can do anyway through ChatGPT also. And a beauty contest has been judged in 2016 through an AI judge where it was trained to detect face symmetry and features. AI toothbrush. So many more such day-to-day -day things, those, those were actually not so important or critical otherwise are now being shifted to AI. There are a few tools that I'll recommend here. Uh, if you could see the slide, AI tools, ai.google, ai.facebook.com. Uh, I have changed the slide, so please, please confirm if you could see this. Yes, AI demos.microsoft.com and then LRP server dot phone offer dot D quick draw dot bit with google.com. Now this quick draw is very interesting. So quick draw, could you see my screen where I'm opening quick draw? Yes. Yes. So it will ask you to draw something and it will start predicting from the first stroke of your drawing that what you are going to draw. Suppose it has asked me to draw a garden 20 seconds. And I'll do something like this. I'm drawing, I'm not a garden. Though I could not draw it, but it has, it has, it has been able to predict few of these things, right? Now try this tool for two, three days. And then when you will try to draw something, 
it will be able to predict what is in your mind from the first row. You will just draw the first row or maybe second row and it will tell you that you are going to draw this. Now, this is so easy to, to understand someone's mind through AI. That's what I wanted to show you. Right? So you all can practice it later, but very, very interesting tools are available. And they are challenging. Uh, they can become mind readers eventually and you will be surprised, right? Then there are activities those are happening around. For example, there is a tool called Synthesia. I, I'm sure many of you would have tried this. If not, you can try. This is a free tool which can change face in any video. So you can replace the facial uh, part of any, uh, any character through your face or anybody else's face and create a new video. Then it can also change voice. So you can give your own voice to that character and all the dialogues, dialogues and anything which is uh, spoken which will be in your voice then. Then there is a, there is a tool called, uh, before we go to further industrial applications, there is a tool called muber.com and you can generate music through it. And uh, you can give either lyrics or the mood or the kind of environment you want to use this and it will be it will offer you many more options thousands and thousands of options and you can keep on improving it with more inputs that i want like this that and it will eventually give you the perfect music and this music will never have been developed before this so this is first time there's no ip issue there's no copyright issue then there is a tool called ai artist this is offered by nvidia you can draw something like this can you see the left part of it? And this tool will convert this left part design into this. So even if you are not a good artist, you can, you can uh, draw something, some garbled things, but that can be converted into a very beautiful scenery and picture eventually through AI. So AI will push so many new content, will create new creative people because it will help people to become creative. Then there is a tool called Descript.com, which can clone anybody's voice. It can clone your own voice. It can create anybody's voice. It will just take your three minutes of recording and then it will profile that particular voice for, for eight hours or nine hours. And eventually, once it is profiled, you can use that profile, profiled voice to speak anything in any language in that cloned voice. So that is something which is also dangerous for law enforcement agencies. AI is also disrupting publishing industry. So there are companies in UK, they, they are using AI to decide whether a manuscript should be published or not. So they, they receive thousands and thousands of manuscripts from authors every day. They push it to AI engine. And AI engine decide whether this is going to be bestseller or not, or it is it will be liked by the people or not. In IBM, AI is used to take your HR interviews and they are heavily. Uh, pushing all these activities to AI because it gives you unbiased decision. Modeling industry will be disrupted. There's a website called thispersondoesnotexist.com. You go to that website and you will find thousands and thousands of pictures of real people, those do not exist. They, they, are, they look like real people and there are Facebook profiles, Twitter profile, Instagram profile using those pictures, but they do not exist. So entire modeling industry is now shifting to AI generated faces because you can generate perfect face. You don't need to search a face which you are looking for for your product branding. You can create it and then you can use it without paying any royalty. So this is something which is, which is really, uh, uh, it will disrupt modeling industry and, and the lawyers as well in US. Uh, companies are now using AI for legal uh, suggestions or legal discussions because AI can give you a better suggestion. AI can remember things which those are, those are quite global and they can give you a larger perspective of any uh, problem as compared to any human being because who, who, who will answer only based on his experience and, and, and the, the things that he has done. But AI can consider many more different aspects when he suggests to you something. So wonderful very well used in different uh, such industries and topics. 3D printed cards, AI generated identity access management. And then of course, uh, various research activities where AI is predominantly used. Medicine, 
where uh, the surgical machines are now generated through AI, AI applications for image analysis, for transportation. You know that our entire uh, Tesla autonomous driving car uh, is based on AI, then AI games, and then eventually we'll have AI toys. These AI toys are very smart toys. They can not only play with, their, with kids, they can also take care of them. They can guide them. They can stop them for any such uh, dangerous activity they are trying to do, like touching a power plug or, or maybe opening the door or, or trying out some uh, something which is not good for them. They, they can guide them. They can instruct them. They can alarm them. And then eventually, let me tell you about Moore's Law and Singularity Theorem. So we know that where are we heading to? Moore's law says that every year our processing speed goes double and memory footprint goes half. So we started with 266 megahertz and 366 megahertz and 466 megahertz, then Pentium 1, Pentium 2, Pentium 3 processors, then dual core processors, then quad core processors, then octa core processors. And now we are going beyond that. And that's why the change that we see every year is very big change because now we are jumping from 16 core to 32 core in a year, while earlier that change was linear. And that's why the changes that we have seen in the last 20 years, we will see many more or much faster changes in next one year or two year or three because of this change in processing speed and memory footprint. But where we are heading to, so they say that eventually there'll be a time when collective intelligence of all human beings, collective intelligence of all human brains will be less than a single machine. And that's, that's the point when we say that we have achieved singularity. So scientists predicted that we may touch singularity in 2045 August. But since last two years, they have seen the changes and again calculated the singularity date. And now the new date that they have announced is August 2030. So in next six, seven years, or maybe before that, we may be achieving singularity where a single machine will have more intelligence than entire human being. So that's, that's why there are research going on in US. There's a university called Singularity University where they are researching the impact of singularity on human race. Many more such interesting things happening around the world. I just wanted to give you a picture of AI, generic picture of AI in different industries. Though lots of industries, they are using AI nowadays and to give you a glimpse, it's integrated in AI business operations to make it efficient in customer experience. I saw uh, a show like Shark Tank and there a, a team has demonstrated a AI, AI, a AI based uh, collection agent. So this is a software which makes call to the people those have taken loan and if they have not paid their EMI, so these are pro, pro, uh, 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 possibly in girls wise and they, they'll call them and they'll push them, pursue them that you need to pay the EMI. And so all these collection agents will be replaced eventually to these machines. The future workforce, reskilling and upskilling employees, decision making, lots of decision making at leadership level are now happening through AI. AI driven marketing, personalization, and customer targeting in the digital age. AI enhanced supply chain, lots of supply chain operations will be transferred to AI. Predictive analysis, redefining banking, investment, and insurance. You already would have seen some uh, applications or tools where uh, they, they predict the share market pattern through AI. Now, eventually it will become much more accurate and efficient. Then for business security, safeguarding against emerging threats. So cyber security is one of the biggest area where uh, AI is used. Maximizing revenue through intelligent sales strategy. So now industries are creating their sales strategy through AI. From automation to smart factories, revolutionizing online shopping experience, transforming talent acquisition management, so HR interviews and all these pre-scanning now, they do it through AI. So all these things, those were earlier dependent uh, on human being or on people now move to AI. And these are the jobs, those will be affected very soon. So that's, that's, that's what uh, uh, I have 
experience in last one year when this generator pretend transformer journey started. But now where, what new jobs will be there and what we should learn and to, to become more effective in our future uh, 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 journey. And that's what this, what this kind of discussions are going on. So in my perspective, I think quickly, you should learn how to use AI. If you can't learn how to use ChatGPT effectively, you will be left behind. Or if you can't learn how to use BARD effectively, you will be left behind. Because with these tools, you can make yourself more smart and more effective, more efficient. You can do many more things easily. And I, you, I do it every day. Just last week, a few weeks back, the Observer, there's a magazine, they asked me to send an article on quantum computing and its impact on India. I was busy, they were chasing me and it was late night. So I created that article through ChatGPT, copy pasted and submitted, to, submitted it to them. And they published it very next. There was no spelling mistake, there was no grammatical mistake, there was no technical mistake. It was perfect article. They published it. In few days, they paid me money as well. And then they sent me that link. They said, your article is published and we are getting great response of that article. So I posted it on my social media. And then people start writing in comment section that it is a great article and wonderful article, sir. And what badia likha. And then I thought, let me also read this article <laughs> because if it is so good. I read that article and I, I was amazed that if I would have written it and even after putting entire days of effort or maybe two days of effort, I could not, I could not have written it so well. So it's good if you can use these tools to make your work more smart. Uh, there's no ethical or unethical boundaries nowadays. And uh, for to write emails, to write messages to convince some, someone or to negotiate with someone. I use ChatGPT. ChatGPT gives me very smart logics, which if you start using it, you can convince any human being. So that way it's very smart. And uh, right now we are comparing all these AI evolution with our current mind status. See, we do not use our mind to 100% of its capability. We use 6 to 7% or at max 10% not 100%. Why, do, why, why, why are we restricted? Because we didn't try. We thought our calm hora, life chal rahi hai, 10% super jana hai. Whatever best we could do, we could do it with 10% brain. But this AI now will now push us to use other part of brain as well. And eventually we'll start learning those skills. Those were never explored. Those have never been explored. For example, you would have seen lots of mind readers. And we are always amazed. Body language guess kar rahe hai, eye blinking pattern guess kar rahe hai, kar. But it is a skill. It's a skill which anybody can develop. We develop ki, hume nahi le. But imagine if tomorrow you we all learn that skill and we start reading each other's mind. It will be amazing. We do not need to speak too much. We are not forcing anybody verbally or shouting on anybody. There will be things which will happen much more in a much more efficient, smoother way. So I assume that in future, and I think so, it will happen eventually. Human race and the current education system that we have. Do we have time? Just keep on speaking, speaking. Arjun sir, I think. Yes, you have time. So the current education system that we have, it, 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 it is designed uh, to test your memory from the, from class one or KG. We, we are just training human brains so that they can remember things and then we test it. Could you do that or not? But if we'll do the same things now, we will eventually be competing with machines. And we can never beat machine in memory test. We can never. They will always outperform us. And that's why we should change our education system. We should not just test our memory skills. We should push 
human brains to build new skills new skills i have given you one example mind reading skills or many other skills which will eventually help us to do something much more effective in future so this is what i think so otherwise for the current generation i'll request you to practice to know more and more ai tools so that you as an individual can enhance your uh, capabilities with ai you can become much more effective for any industry so this is the right time explore it there are ample of job opportunities waiting for you thank you so much thank you sir for such an informative and an innovative session i would say so i would request nivida ma'am to share her views on the same thanks mr amit yeah it's it's a mind boggling concept listening to you i feel uh, of course happy that a lot of new things are happening but also worried where are we headed but tell me what how is it going to be used in the government especially in india where we still are very traditionalist in a way in our decision making you know we still have the system of drafting white paper drafting and then second draft calling for objection suggestions इसमें एआई कहाँ आएगा? देखिए and they are sending notices to people and they are able to use it effectively isse pehle itne notice kabhi nahi bhejega jitne aaj bhej jate hain kyunki wo choti se choti jo gaps hai aapke tax wo identify kar le ya money laundering to itna catch kiya ja raha hai to government already use kar rahi hai iske alawa health department bahut use kar raha hai because they can now predict uh, or classify jo diseases hain geographical region ke hisab se classify kar pa कि इस एरिया में इस तरह के प्रॉब्लम्स है इस एरिया में इस तरह के प्रॉब्लम है अदरवाइज जो गवर्नमेंट की पॉलिसीज होती थी बड़ी यूनिफॉर्म होती थी तो छत्तीसगढ़ में भी पोलियो की दवा बांट रहे हैं और यहाँ भी बांट रहे हैं और वहां तो उतना फैला भी नहीं सो ऑल दैट काइंड ऑफ डिसीजन आर नाउ मच मोर अलाइन टू दिस प्रॉब्लम इज एंड बजट कैन बी रिड्यूज टू ए ग्रेट एक्सपेंड तो वो एफिशियंट हो जाता है और जो ए यूज होगा अभी ई गवर्नेंस में जुडिशरी में बहुत ए यूज होगा अभी एक पंजाब चंडीगढ़ कोर्ट में एक जज थे और उनको एक डिसीजन देना था एक बेल ऑर्डर का तो ही वाज नॉट वेरी ही वाज नॉट श्योर कि ये बेल देना चाहिए नहीं देना चाहिए तो उन्होंने चैट जीपीटी से पूछा कि भाई इसको बेल देना चाहिए एंड चैट जीपीटी ने आंसर दिया कि नहीं इसको बेल मत दीजिए क्योंकि सिमिलर काइंड ऑफ ऑफेंसेज जो कि इस तरह का कोई केस ऑस्ट्रेलिया में और यूएस में हुए हैं वहां बेल नहीं दी तो ही वॉट कन्विंस एंड उन्होंने बेल नहीं दी जब वो बेल ऑर्डर पास किया उन्होंने तो उसमें नीचे लिखा कि आई जस्ट रेफर चैट जीपीटी फॉर द रेफरेंस आई एम नॉट इन्फ्लुएंस बाय चैट जीपीटी मतलब इसलिए लिख दिया क्योंकि ऐसा ना हो कल के दिन कि लोग चैट जीपीटी से डिसीजन देने लगे और एक गलत ट्रेडिशन सेट हो गया तो हम जिस फेस में है उसमें अभी हम ये भी नहीं कह सकते कि चैट जीपीटी हमेशा सही आंसर देगा बिकॉज चैट जीपीटी है या बाढ़ है ये सारे बायस्ड है ये बायस्ड इसलिए है क्योंकि इनके पास जो डेटा फीड हुआ इनको जब बिल्ड किया गया मोस्ट ऑफ द डेटा दैट दे कुड कलेक्ट इज इन इंग्लिश इनके पास दूसरी लैंग्वेज का डेटा है ही नहीं था ही नहीं तो जितना भी इनका लॉजिकल रीजनिंग है या जो भी क्रिएटिव बैंड है आप देखोगे तो इंग्लिश की पोएम बड़ी अच्छी लिखेगा हिंदी में लिखा होगा तो खराब लिख देते क्योंकि उनके पास वो कल वो हिस्ट्री या वो कल्चर या वो लिटरेचर उसने उसको फीड ही नहीं किया इवेंचुअली ऐसा होगा कि हिंदी वाला भी या मराठी वाला भी या तमिल तेलुगु का फीड किया जाएगा वो उस, उस पर भी अच्छा क्रिएटिव आउटपुट देगा पर अभी नहीं होता अभी आप टेस्ट करके देखिए अभी इंग्लिश में बहुत अच्छी स्टोरी लिखेगा या बहुत अच्छी पोएम लिखेगा या बट बाकी लैंग्वेज में वीक होता है या लिख ही नहीं पाता है वो ट्रांसलेट कर देता सो बाइज नॉट ओनली क्रिएटिव वाइज बट किसी भी डिसीजन में जैसे लॉ जो यूएस का है वो फॉलो कर इंडियन लॉज को भी फॉलो नहीं करते तो पॉलिसी के जो डिसीजन होंगे उसमें भी आप बहुत ज्यादा इंटरव्यू करेंगे इस तरह के टूल्स के थ्रू मे नॉट बी करेक्ट so government of india has taken an initiative to build our own nlm isko bola bhashini karke ek project start kiya hua hai bhashini aap google pe search karenge mil jayega to india ki jitni language hai 67 jo official languages hai usko lekar ek nlm design ho raha hai 
and i think by december we'll have first out uh, uh, cut of that llm model jo chat gpt ki tarah hoga but it will work in different languages and you can not only get answers but can also create things so things are happening and why we are building it because we want it to be used in education kyunki ab kisi teacher ki zarurat nahi hai bachcha kahin se bhi kuch hi puchega thoda creative answer deta aur chat gpt is a, uh, is like conversational tool ये गूगल नहीं है कि आपने सर्च किया पचास ऑप्शन दे दिया उसके बाद आप कंफ्यूज हो कौन सा सही है कौन सा गलत है ऐसा नहीं करते ये कॉन्वर्सेशन है जैसे मैं आपकी आपसे बात कर रहा हूं तो आप आपको जैसे मैं पहला सवाल पूछूंगा वो याद रखता है कि पहले सवाल क्या पूछा मुझे पूरा सवाल ही फ्रेम नहीं करना जैसे कि मैं आपसे बोलूँ की मैम मुझे एक पोएम हिंदी में सुनाइए नई पोएम क्रिएट कर दीजिए आपने क्रिएट कर दी फिर मैं अगला सवाल पूछता हूँ इंग्लिश में पूरा सवाल नहीं मैंने कहा इंग्लिश में तो वो समझ जाता है कि मैं उसी पोएम की बात कर रहा हूँ जो मैंने पहले अभी लिखी है तो उसको इंग्लिश में बताऊँ तो वो एक कन्वर्सेशनल टूल की तरह काम करे सो इवेंचुअली जो इस तरह के एआई मॉडल्स होंगे इट विल बी यूज इन एजुकेशन प्रीडोमिनेंटली एंड विद लार्ज एंड लार्ज सेट ऑफ डेटा उसकी जो एक्यूरेसी और एफिशिएंसी भी इंप्रूव सो गवर्नमेंट इज ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लॉयड द एआई टेक्नोलॉजी इन मेनी ई गवर्नेंस सिस्टम एज वेल स्पेशल बजट भी सैंक्शन हुआ है और एआई के लिए तो बजट 2 साल पहले ही सैंक्शन हो गया था अभी तो क्वांटम के लिए 8000 करोड़ सैंक्शन कर दिया तो इनोवेशन रिसर्च को लेकर गवर्नमेंट इज वेरी बुलिश राइट और एआई ऐसी चीज है या क्वांटम ऐसी चीज है इसमें भी हमने रिसर्च नहीं किया या अपने इंजन्स नहीं बनाए तो इवेंचुअली विल बी कंट्रोल्ड बाय अदर्स वो हमसे आगे निकल जाए सो आई थिंक दैट इज द रीजन दैट इज वन ऑफ द रीजन दैट गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया इज पुटिंग टू मच स्टेक ऑन एआई एंड क्लॉक या एंड एज यू राइटली सेड दैट अ लॉट ऑफ दिस डेटा बेस्ड ऑन व्हिच द एआई format or module or whatever you call it has been created is western data it's not taken from india and therefore exactly. it is it it could be irrelevant for us correct correct but ek baat bataiye you said that you got an article created through chat gpt but um, every article before being published is passed through the plagiarism test to wo kaise pass kar gaya to ai jo generate karta hai chat gpt usme koi plagiarism nahi hota acha wo hamesha naya article dega और उससे पहले वो आर्टिकल कभी लिखा नहीं गया और उसको आप बोल भी सकते हो जब आर्टिकल आप लिखवाएंगे ना तो उसको बोलोगे कि इसमें मुझे पांच परसेंट भी प्लेगरिज्म नहीं चाहिए तो वो उतना भी हट थोड़ा बहुत भी होगा वो भी हटा देगा तो यू कैन डिसाइड तो इसीलिए तो एआई को कई स्कूल्स ने बैन कर दिया क्योंकि यदि दस बच्चे ए जो चैट जीपी के थ्रू आंसर निकाल के आपने कोई ऐसे लिखवाया या कोई भी आंसर लिखवाया तो हर आंसर दे देगा तो हर बच्चे के लिए अलग आंसर देते सेम क्वेश्चन Hmm. और इसलिए उसमें जो कॉपी पेस्टिंग वाली पॉसिबिलिटी होती नहीं अच्छा। तो इसलिए स्कूल्स को बैन करना पड़ा hmm. इस, इस, इस that creative that yeah. can give you yeah no i can i can get my uh, brain around the fact that wo manufacturing mein use ho raha hai car company mein ho raha hai ya service sector mein ho raha hai lekin uh, if it's starting to do painting and artist artist work and uh, Uh, you know drawing then there is something and uh, uh, writing articles then there can is can you see can you can you see my screen yes i can this is chat gpt and now suggest write a poem tell me a topic any topic jiske upar koi poem likh hi nahi sakta absurd sa topic moon landing moon landing to very bada emotional <laughs> moon landing with uh, emotions जरूरी नहीं रिव्यू लिखने की जरूरत नहीं मैंने सिर्फ अभी इतना लिखा सो अपॉन दी कैनवस ऑफ द नाइट सो डीप अ वॉइस ऑफ ड्रीम्स इम्बार्क टू कीप अ सिल्वर इन द स्काई द मून अवेटेड विद क्यूरियस आई विद हर्ट्स ऑफ एक्सप्लोर्स एक्सप्लोरर्स ये पूरा लिख के मानेगा स्टॉप कर दे राइट अब आप पढ़िए जरा पोएम मैंने इसमें आप मतलब एंड यू कैन कंपेयर इट विद एनी एनी अदर क्रिएटिव राइटर विद हर्ट्स ऑफ एक्सप्लोरर्स डेरिंग एंड बोल्ड अ जर्नी टू द हैवेंस दे वुड अनटोल अनफोल्ड अ वेसल ऑफ साइंस होप एंड प्योर डिवोशन सेट आउट टू क्रॉस द सेलेस्टियल ओशन इन द रियाम वेयर स्टार्स फॉरएवर डाउंस ह्यूमैनिटी डेयर टू टेक अ चांस अ स्मॉल स्टेप फॉर मैन यट जायंट इन स्ट्राइड ऑन द मून सरफेस dreams with kumai 
Eyes fixed on earth, a distant gem, a reminder of where we all stem, a unity forced across borders of space in that moment, a shared human place. And Abhi is saying, I don't like it. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. Didn't like it. So, he will write another one. No problem. Don't be angry. So, do you have any pain for AI or chat GPT? No. No. <laughs> if you if he if he or she has written with so much if it has written with so much care a chap poem likha hai it makes sense or aapne yeah, kaha didn't like to usko dukh hoga na tabhi to main keh raha hu ek conversational hai isme aisa nahi hai ki aapko bahut kuch command type karna hai hmm ek second okay Bhandi, you get the questions together. I'm sure there may be many questions. Sure, yeah, you can ask. I, I just wanted to show you so doubt. Na rahe. Yeah. Yeah, I'm amazed. Hmm. I have never used chat GPT. Today I will start. So, I encourage you to use it. So, there is an issue of server. Ka issue hai. Hmm. तो आप अपने आप को एफिशिएंट कर सकते हैं यू कैन मेक योरसेल्फ मोर एफिशिएंट और हम लोग उसने आपको काउंटर क्वेश्चन भी पूछा हां तभी तो कह रहा हूं कि उसको आप जब यूज करोगे तो यू विल बी अलाइन विद चैट जीपीटी ओके इसको कैसे पूछना है क्या करना है वो आपको समझना शुरू कर देगा आप उसको समझना शुरू ज्यादा इफेक्टिव काम हो पाएगा हम्म so it will make the, our students, our new, uh, young generation even more lazy. Haan, to ye impact hai. Dekhye, do tarah ki generation aayegi. Ek wo hoogi, jo sochegi, chalo chat GPT se kara lete hai, to lazy hoogi. Ek wo hoogi, jo chat GPT se isli kara hai, ki wo usko better karna chahe. So do tarah ki loog create hoogi. Ek hoogi, jo jyada smart hoote jayenge, they'll push their brain more. To bojo, mein kya noon, 10% se 20%, 30% jayenge, they'll learn more skills. जैसे माइंड रीडिंग स्किल्स है या जो जिस तरह भी ऐसी स्किल्स होती हैं जो हमें अभी तक रेयर लगती थी टेलीपैथी कर लिया कर लिया वो हमारे ब्रेन में है कहीं हम यूज नहीं करते क्योंकि जरूरत ही नहीं हम सोचते हैं हम चिल्ला देंगे तो काम हो गया तो हम शाउट करना शुरू कर देते लेकिन ये शॉर्टकट है देर आर मच मोर पावरफुल थिंग्स दैट वी हैव इन अवर ब्रेन विच वी हैव नूज so I think there will be another set of people who will push this thing in their own way. They will learn those things and eventually they will be AI for them. But it will be both. And it will always be the same. There is nothing new. No, then at that stage, the Darwin's law will start working. And it will be the survival of the fittest. This means who will be the fittest? Survival of the fittest is a natural law. मतलब ये तो कभी खत्म नहीं होगा मतलब इट्स ऑलवेज लाइक दैट बट देर विल बी पीपल दो बी मोर आई वुड से कंपेरेटिवली स्मार्टर और देखिए अभी भी आप देखेंगे तो जो हमारा प्राइमेट है जो मतलब ह्यूमन रेस का एवोल्यूशन आप देखोगे तो लार्जर सेट ऑफ पीपल आर नॉट इवॉल्व यट वो कुछ ही लोग होते हैं जो इवॉल्व होते ऊपर तक पहुंचते तो वो सारे चैलेंजेस आगे भी रहेंगे सो वोट इट देन एग्रवेट एंड इंक्रीज द डिजिटल इनइक्विटी इट विल इट विल इंक्रीज नॉट ओनली इनइक्वेलिटी इट विल ऑल्सो क्रिएट डिस्पैरिटी इन इनकम्स मच मोर उसी चीज को रेगुलेट करने के लिए we need frameworks and government of india is trying to bring in ai framework now par hota kya hai ki ab framework ya law ya policies hain ye cheezon ka misuse hone se rok nahi pate ye sirf acche logon ko misuse karne se rokte ye bure logon ko nahi rokte so jo hoga wo to ho gayi the only thing is ki speed kam ho jayegi with the framework कम लोग होंगे जो वैसा चीज करने की कोशिश करेंगे कि ए का मिसयूज करें या उसको 
किसी को नुकसान पहुंचाने के लिए बट इट विल डेफिनेटली है I can see two here. Um, hey, Jashwa ji ne uh, hand raise kiya tha. Do you have any question, hey, Jashwa ji? Good evening, ma'am. Am I audible? Yes, yes you are. Loud and clear. Yes, ma'am. Ma'am, regarding this, uh, as sir uh, told, that we can use a uh, chat GPT and with uh, in. coming years we can use the bhashni also when we have in 5 10 years there will be more data into it so regarding that i wanted to ask how do you see this like uh the bureaucrats before going to the fc they are also doing various uh, ai they are learning various ai tools data visualization tools r python before going to the fc in labasna so do uh in future bureaucrats will need researchers or think tanks or they can do it by themselves only like with a command only they can generate their research and they can check only regarding that i wanted to ask what will be the uh, role of a public policy profession in future please let's hear from amit ji yeah so first of all even today because i have trained people in labasna and uh, The bureaucrats, large set of bureaucrats in AI, and I have right. trained them how to use ChatGPT and Bard and other tools. So they will definitely use it because they will not be dependent on such petty things on any other human being. They can write letters better, they can write articles better, they can write policies better. But then you need to convey your thought process to ChatGPT, right. and uh, there will always be difference. If you are using ChatGPT and I am using ChatGPT or any other LLM model for that matter, Bhashni and uh, it will always give a different content because the way you have asked or the way you have conveyed your thought process, it also matters. So that's why there are there there is there is always uh, there'll always be uh, better and worse things produced through ChatGPT. So I'm sure. all these bureaucrats will definitely start using it that's not a matter of concern but the question is eventually i was i was uh, i was giving a presentation to some ceos and there uh, one young lady she asked ki can we use ai for boardroom discussions analysis so i asked what do you mean she says that ki hum log boardroom mein baith ke discussion karte hain hum us ai ko sara discussion de dete hain ye sara record recorded de dete और उसके बाद वो उस डिसीजन के बेस पर समरी दे दे और एक डिसीजन दे तो कैन बी यूज इट फॉर दैट मैंने कहा बिल्कुल यूज कर सकते हैं डेफिनेटली यूज इट इन करेंट कॉन्टेक्स्ट द क्वेश्चन इज नॉट टू यूज इट द क्वेश्चन इज डू वी नीड इट इवेंचुअली एआई के बाद क्या हमें इसकी जरूरत भी पड़ेगी क्या हम बोर्ड रूम में बैठ के डिसीजन कर रहे हैं यदि वो ए नहीं डिसीजन लेना है <laughs> और ए हम सबके बारे में जानता है क्योंकि जब हम मैं एआई यूज करूंगा जैसे मैं चैट जीपी यूज करूँ तो मेरे बारे में इवेंचुअली सब जान जाएगा मेरा थॉट प्रोसेस मेरा ब्रेन कैसे काम करता है आपके बारे में जान जाएगा डॉक्टर निवेदिता के बारे में जान जाएगा आप हमें एक डिसीजन लेना तो हमें आपस में बात करने की जरूरत नहीं है उसको हम तीनों का ब्रेन पता है आपने क्वेश्चन थ्रो किया उसने डिसीजन दे दिया यदि तीनों डिस्कस करेंगे तो ये आउटकम आएगा चाहे दो घंटे कर लें चाहे दो मिनट तो उस लेवल तक ए आई जाने सो ब्यूरोक्रेसी की भी हमें जरूरत पड़ेगी क्या सवाल उससे भी बड़ा कि इवेंचुअली क्योंकि हमारा डेटा ऑलरेडी है अभी एक एआई मॉडल है जो लीडर्स के ब्रेन को सिमुलेट कर देता है तो मैं मुंबई में था एंड प्रिंसिपल सेक्रेटरी वहां पे ब्रजेश सिंह जी उन्होंने मुझे दिखाया वो मॉडल तो उन्होंने शशि थरूर का मॉडल बना रखा उन्होंने कहा देखिए शशि थरूर का ए मॉडल आप इससे जो भी पूछोगे जैसे शशि थरूर जी आंसर करेंगे वही आंसर करेगा चेक करते हैं तो मैंने दो चार सवाल पूछे बिल्कुल वैसे मतलब यू कैन फील इट हाँ यार ये बिल्कुल वैसे ही लिख रहा है सिमिलरली उन्होंने और दो चार लीडर्स का दिखाया कि ये उसका ब्रेन सिमुलेटेड है एंड इफ यू डिस्कस एनी पॉलिसी मैटर एनी थिंग टू देम इट विल रिस्पॉन्ड यू बेस्ड ऑन देयर आइडियोलॉजी बायसिंग और अनबायसिंग जबकि अभी तो इन्होंने ओपन सोर्स डेटा से सिमुलेट किया 
जो भी ये बनाया है इसमें कोई बहुत लार्ज सेट ऑफ डेटा यूज नहीं होगा जो यूट्यूब पे वीडियो पड़े होंगे या जो उनके स्पीचेस होंगे उसको लेकर उसका ब्रेन एमुलेट किया हम तो 24 घंटे भी इंटरनेट पर है हमारा तो इतना डेटा जाए सो इवेंचुअली द ए आई मॉडल्स विल बी क्रिएटेड फॉर ईच एंड एवरी वे ब्रेन जो भी अर्थ पर है और उनके आपस में कोई कॉर्डिनेशन करना है वो भी ए कर लेगा उसके लिए हमें आपस में बात करने की भी जरूरत ना पड़े शायद आई एम एक्सपेक्टिंग दैट लेवल ऑफ disruption nature but one thing is there you know it is not ai uh, is the system is not delving into your brain it is understanding your brain through your words your language your expressions to bahut kuch brain mein rehta hai hamara jo hum express nahi karte wo kaise samjhega ha wo dheere dheere samjhega see or in a longer jitna aap uske sang samay bitaoge देखिए हमारा बिकॉज हम आजकल ज्यादा टाइम इंटरनेट पर बिताते हैं तो हमारी जो एक्टिविटीज हैं या जो हमारे जो भी हम काम कर रहे हैं जो आज की डेट में पहले चार पांच घंटे होता होता था आज की डेट में हम बारह पंद्रह सोलह घंटे तक इंटरनेट पर तो इवेंचुअली हमारे जितने एक्सप्रेशन है वो इंटरनेट को ज्यादा पता रियल वर्ल्ड को कम पता माई पॉइंट इज दैट यदि मैं इन कॉगनेटो मोड में कुछ कर रहा हूँ मैं छुप के एक वीडियो देख रहा हूँ मैं व्हाट्सएप पे इसकी प्रोफाइल जूम इन करके देख रहा हूँ या मैं उसका नहीं देख रहा हूँ या उसको मैं एक्सप्रेशन ऐसा दे रहा हूँ मेनी ऑफ योर इमोशंस जो शायद रियल वर्ल्ड के लोगों को पता ही नहीं है पर वो वर्चुअल वर्ल्ड में आप कर देते हो क्योंकि आपको लगता है कोई देख थोड़ी ना hmm. तो उसको आपके बारे में ज्यादा पता है और यदि वो ब्रेन एमुलेट कर लेता मैं ये नहीं कह रहा हंड्रेड कर लेगा आई एम श्योर हंड्रेड तो नहीं हो सकता लेकिन यदि वो एट्टी भी है सेवेंटी भी है तो भी डेंजरस hmm. उस लेवल पर तो ये जा ही सकता Vaishali, Vaishali has raised her hand. Banvi. Yes, sir. Um, so I had one question with respect to where is that data protection uh, lies in this? Because I'm sure there are a lot many forensics and uh, biotechnology which are using uh, people's data, DNA, and so on and so forth, uh, to kind of generate uh, the results. So, in with respect to this, where is where does the Where does it lie? Where does the data protection lies then here? It raises another concern, another paradigm shift of data protection. Very good question. So first of all, how it is being generated? Mm -hmm. They have collected this data through, from different sources: open source data, classified data, government data. Some data they have bought. Some data they have taken dark web. I'm not, I'm, I'm not sure, but many more sources they have used to eventually get. लार्ज सेट ऑफ डेटा टू नो ईच एंड एवरी थिंग अबाउट द वर्ल्ड चैट जीपीटी से आप कुछ भी पूछो किसी भी दुनिया के बारे में सब पता है उसको तो इनके पास डेटा सेट था वो जो डेटा लिया इनके पास कहीं स्टोर था देन दे स्टार्ट ट्रेनिंग देयर मॉडल अब मॉडल ट्रेन हो गया जो ये ट्रेन मॉडल है इसका साइज बड़ा नहीं होता दिस इज इन फ्यू एम बीज और जीबीज आप समझ रहे हो मैं क्या कहने की कोशिश कर रहा हूँ कि आपका डेटा कहीं और है आप जो ऑफर कर रहे हो वो मॉडल है यहाँ पर ऑफलाइन चैट जीपीटी मॉडल्स भी अवेलेबल है आपको इंटरनेट की भी जरूरत नहीं है आपने डाउनलोड कर लिया हार्डली 200-400 एमबी का फाइल होगा और वो आपको दुनिया की हर चीज का आंसर दे देगा लाखों करोड़ों कविताएं क्रिएट कर देगा कुछ भी कर तो आपके पास जो साइज प्रोटेक्शन के लिए डेटा का है क्या है क्या मॉडल ही तो है जो 500 सौ का है क्वेश्चन इज नॉट अबाउट दैट डेटा जो सोर्स किया मुझे उस डेटा की भी टेंशन नहीं चलो वो तो पब्लिक ही था अमेजूमिंग मोस्ट ऑफ दिस डेटा वॉज पब्लिक क्वेश्चन अब है कि जब मैं चैट जीपीटी से इंटरेक्ट कर रहा हूं तब मैं बहुत सारा डेटा उसको दे कि मैं किस तरह के सवाल पूछ फॉर एग्जांपल मैं एक सीईओ और मैं चैट जीपीटी से पूछता हूं कि मुझे बिजनेस स्ट्रैटेजी बनानी है मेरी ये कंपनी है या मुझे सेल्स स्ट्रैटेजी बनानी है या मुझे स्टैंडर्ड के बुका ये डॉक्यूमेंट बनाना है आप मुझे ड्राफ्ट करके दे उसने दे दिया पर चैट जीपीटी को यह भी पता है कि इसका कॉम्प्यूटर भी यही काम कर रहा है और उधर वो अनिथिकल हो सकता तो ये जो चैलेंजेस है कि मेरी सिक्योरिटी जब मैं उसके पूछ रहा हूँ मेरा थॉट प्रोसेस दे रहा हूँ उसको बहुत सारी इन्फॉर्मेशन देता हूँ तब तो मुझे जवाब देता है उस डेटा की सिक्योरिटी के लिए भी कोई पॉलिसी कोई फ्रेमवर्क कुछ भी नहीं बिकॉज दैट इज कॉन्वर्सेशनल डेटा वो कॉन्वर्सेशनल डेटा बहुत जरूरी है क्योंकि वो कॉन्वर्सेशन की वजह से आपको समझता है और आपकी कंपनी के बारे में समझता है या आपकी जिस जिस आइडेंटिटी से भी आप बात करो गवर्नमेंट को तो डिफेंस के बारे में भी समझता है या जिस जिसको भी आप रिप्रेजेंट करो Which is much more sensitive. So I'm not bothered about the open source data, which is used to train that LLM. 
I'm not bothered about that LLM trained model as well. I'm more bothered about the conversational data, which is now being pushed to them. And they'll know each and everything about our mind because of that conversation. Just kill a quick policy framework. Mm -hmm. Thank you, sir. And there is one more question from Ronna Yeah. Also, Asta had a question, I think. Yes, uh, good evening, sir, ma'am. Am I audible? Yeah. Yes, you are. Uh, yeah, so, sir, my question was, uh, since you have been talking about the use of AI in bureaucracy, um, there are numerous instances where the bureaucracy is uh, like pressurized by the politics or by the politicians in charge of our state or something. And uh, bureaucrats have to rely on their emotions uh, also when they take a uh, decision, like pressure from above or um, something like that. So when you talk about uh, AI replacing major functions or, or that a bureaucrat does or a government official does, is it not beneficial to allow AI to overtake uh, most of these functions? Because we are then uh, uh, we are then left with a much more efficient system of uh, making policies or uh, taking decisions at uh, the uh, bureaucratic at the bureaucratic level or the government level as well. Actually, I mean uh, I may not be agreeing to that because जब हम किसी bureaucrat को भी power देते हैं कि आप ये decision लीजिए तो उसके समय उसको दो चीजें और देते हैं एक accountability and responsibility कल के दिन यदि कुछ गलत होगा तो उस पर कुछ सजा दी जाए हम यदि AI से वो decision करवाएं और वो गलत हुआ या biased हुआ तो हम सजा किसको देंगे और AI पे हम बहुत ज़्यादा trust नहीं कर सकते हमें ऐसा लग रहा है कि AI unbiased ही होगा या शक correct होगा अभी chat GPT बहुत सारी गलतियां करता है तो ये evolve हो रहा है अभी तो बहुत nascent stage में हाँ आगे जाके कभी ऐसा आ जाए कि वो उस level की maturity achieve कर ले but अभी नहीं अभी बिल्कुल भी नहीं and uh, मुझे डर है कि आगे भी लोग उसके साथ खेल रहे हैं because AI को जो भी generic AI models हैं उनको manipulate किया जा सकता है हम उसको wrong data देना शुरू कर दें ultimately तो उसका brain भी data पे dependent है data की sanity कौन check करे मैं उसको wrong data नहीं देता मैं open source data wrong इतना generate कर देता हूँ कि जब वो data लेता open source से तो उसको अधिकतर डेटा एक तरह का मिलता है बायस और उसकी ओपिनियन बायस हो जाती है तो जितना डेटा जिसने भी पुश किया हुआ है इंटरनेट पर उस बेस पर वो कॉल ले रहा है सो इवेंचुअली कहीं ना कहीं कोई ना कोई बायस ही उसमें भी होगी उसका कोई अपना क्वेश्चंस नहीं है सेल्फ कॉन्शियस नहीं है एक इंसान के अंदर एक ब्रेन है ये भी होता है यार ये एक चीज गलत भले उसको ट्रेड कर दिया जाए लेकिन एक उसकी अंतरात्मा में आवाज जरूर आती है वो अंतरात्मा उसके पास नहीं उसका डिसीजन सिर्फ डेटा पर और वो मैनिपुलेट किया जा सकता तो मेरे ख्याल से कुछ ऐसे डिसीजंस के लिए हम अभी पूरी तरीके से एआई को नहीं दे सकते और जब इंसान को हम देते हैं तो इंसान के कि हम उस जो अंतरात्मा उस पर ट्रस्ट करते हैं कि वो इतना गलत नहीं करेगा कि खुद को भी चेहरा ना दिखा पाए या कुछ ऐसा सो मेरे ख्याल से इस वजह से ह्यूमन रिप्लेस करना ऐसे रोल्स पर बहुत मुश्किल Thank you, sir. Asta? Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, my question was very much related to what Vaishali asked is uh, when, uh, because uh, AI is developing so much, data is the main source of everything, uh, every development. Because of this growth of data, where does individual privacy, individual autonomy, and individual identity lie? Is my question. So first of all, nature does not give you security. Nature does not give you privacy. This is this is all created by humans. So, हम यदि थोड़ा सा liberal हो जाए और ये मान के चलें कि चलो ठीक मेरा सारा data तुम्हें पता है तो हम ज़्यादा honest हो जाएंगे <laughs> because जब आपको सब कुछ पता ही है then what wrong you could do with the challenge is when we are so secretive about something. And that's why all this chaos gets created. So this is a little philosophical that we need to understand. You 
सिर्फ ए को ब्लेम करें इसके लिए क्योंकि पिछले 20 साल से फेसबुक नोज ईच एंड एवरी थिंग अबाउट यू या गूगल नोज ईच एंड एवरी थिंग अबाउट यू या एनी अदर एप्लीकेशन दे आर एनी वे कलेक्टिंग दिस डेटा सो दे हैव एनी वे प्रोफाइल यू एंड दिस डेटा इज आउटसाइड समवेयर एंड दिस डेटा विल बी शेयर्ड विद मेनी अदर प्लेयर्स एज वेल टू ऑफर यू मेनी मोर थिंग्स सो वो प्रीवेसी वाला फैक्टर तो चला गया इज नॉट गोइंग बिकॉज ऑफ एयर इज एनी वे गॉन आपके सारे पासवर्ड हैक्ड हैं वो दुनिया भर में पड़े हुए हैं जिस दिन कोई आपके पीछे पड़ेगा इवेंचुअली हिल गेट टू नो दोज पासवर्ड एज वेल अब आप ये जानते हुए कि मेरा पासवर्ड बाहर है मैंने कल डोमिनोज पर पिज्जा खाया था ये सारी दुनिया को पता है अब मुझे कैसे अपने आप को प्रेजेंट करना है इस वर्ल्ड में यदि आप वो लर्न कर लेंगे तेन यू विल नॉट बी बॉदर यू विल नॉट बी बॉदर आई एम नॉट आस्किंग अबाउट द थिंग्स दैट यू डू इन साइड योर होम बट वट एवर यू डू ऑन इंटरनेट आई एम रेफरिंग दो इंटरनेट पे जो कर रहे हैं वो तो जाएगी बात आज तो आप किसी भी तरह से नहीं रुक सकते तो उस चीज को प्राइवेट ना मान इंटरनेट पे जो आप कर रहे हैं वो प्राइवेट के बाउंड्रीज में ना कंसीडर करें उसको एंड इफ यू नो इफ यू क्योंकि सारे क्राइम हो क्यों रहे हैं आपको फोन आता है कि मैं इंश्योरेंस कंपनी से बोल रहा हूँ आपका लास्ट प्रीमियम ये था एंड यू पेड दिस मच मनी तो यू स्टार्ट ट्रस्टिंग दैट पर्सन यार ये तो प्राइवेट चीज है ये इसको कैसे पता जैसे आप ट्रस्ट करते हो आपको लूट लेता है मैं एयरटेल से बोल रहा हूँ आपका नंबर ये है ना आपने आपका पिछला पे लिया है तो उसने आपको कुछ बता दिया आपके बारे में या आपका बैंक अकाउंट या आपने एफ डी करा रखा था दे ऑलवेज रेफर दे ऑलवेज शेयर सम इन्फॉर्मेशन विच इज वेरी वेरी प्राइवेट टू यू एंड दैट्स वाई यू ट्रस्ट यदि मेरा माइंड सेट ऐसे बन जाएगा कि यार ये चीज प्राइवेट होती नहीं तो फिर कोई मुझे चीट कर ही नहीं सकता सो आई थिंक दैट इज द बेस्ट वे ऑफ इवॉल्विंग अवर सेल्स इन दिस फॉर दिस चैलेंज Not to keep create मतलब बहुत बाउंड्रीज क्रिएट करके सिक्योर करने की जरूरत नहीं है ले भाई आपको पता है मुझे भी पता है अब आपका कोई कुछ बिगाड़ नहीं सकता सो आई थिंक दैट इज द बेस्ट पॉइंट और इट कुड बी टू डिवेलप मल्टीपल पर्सनैलिटीज आप इंटरनेट को क्या बता रहे हैं वो इट शुड बी समथिंग डिफरेंट फ्रॉम वॉट यू एक्चुअली आर वो तो देखिए थोड़ा बहुत तो उसमें हर आदमी जो इंटरनेट पर दिखता है और जो रियल में होता है उसमें अंतर तो होते हैं यदि आप बहुत हैप्पी पिक्चर डाल रहे हो तो ए आई को पता है की जो हैप्पी पिक्चर डाल रहा है वो हैप्पी नहीं है ए आई सीधे सीधे नहीं कंसिडर कर रहा है आपकी सारे इनपुट उसी तरीके से कंसीडर कर रहा है जैसे हम सोच रहे हैं <laughs> तो जो ट्यूरिंग टेस्ट है मैं कह रहा ट्यूरिंग टेस्ट टेक्स दैट एआई टू दैट लेवल कि उसको ये पता है कि कल के दिन आप अपने आप को छुपाना चाहो तो आप क्या करोगे तो वो भी एआई गैस करता इट्स नॉट कि आपने छुपाया तो वो मान लेगा कि हाँ आप छुप उसको पता है कि देर आर समथिंग विच इज है It's, it's not that simple. It's very complicated. So, in in short, uh, Mr. Dube, will the lives of the of our millennials be more difficult than it was uh, for us, especially for me? It will be more interesting. Interesting. More interesting. Difficult also. Hey, difficult. Job perspective se bhi lag raha hai. Mujhe aisa lag raha hai ki bahut jab jaise computer aaye the. तो लोग एकदम से डर गए कई सारे गवर्नमेंट एजेंसीज ने ये कहा कि नहीं हम कंप्यूटर लेंगे नहीं हमारे तो काम नौकरी चली जाएगी पर आज हम देखते हैं कि हमारे हाथ में कंप्यूटर और हम उसके बिना नहीं रह सकते और स्टिल वी आर इवॉल्विंग एंड बीइंग बेटर थिंग्स तो मैं उस फिलोसफी पे बिलीव करता हूँ मुझे ऐसा ही लगता है कि कोई भी टेक्नोलॉजी कभी इस तरह के चैलेंज हमें क्रिएट कर पाए ट्रांजिशन फेज में लगता है ऐसा बिकॉज कुछ लोग हैं जो बिल्कुल सीखना नहीं चाहते या उस चीज को पकड़ना नहीं चाहते कुछ लोग हैं जो बहुत तेजी से पकड़ के आगे बढ़ेंगे तो एक गैप बन जाता है बट एक बार वो चीज एक जनरेशन निकल जाती है तो उसके बाद वो चीज नॉर्मल हो जाती है एंड देन यू गेट न्यू चैलेंजेस तो आग, आगे और भी नए नए चैलेंजेस होंगे ये तो भी बहुत छोटा सा चैलेंज लग रहा है मुझे अभी क्वांटम अच्छा। भी आएगा You read it out if he is not there. Yes. 
So basically, she is asking how much effective will AI be in the public policy, and how do we counter AI in people's privacy? I think he answered. So it will be very effective, actually. See, first of all, Chat GPT or any such kind of LLM models, they know all policies created around the world, regulations, act, framework. So well versed with all those possibilities. Now, if you ask uh, to any such LLM that I need to create, I want to create such kind of policy with these kind of inputs, they'll definitely give you a very global picture. And then you can decide what to accept, what not to accept. But it'll be very helpful. They can also suggest you what new policies do we need mm -hmm. to regulate the system or to make it more efficient or to... With, to help law and order situation, they can suggest you also. So that way it's very creative. But eventually it is your decision to accept it or not. Because many a times, few policies, those are good for one country, may not be suitable for another country. So your involvement is definitely important. Yeah. Otherwise, we can't fix accountability. Yeah, we can't fix. Okay. Also, so there is one request from Anisha Churasia ji, like she's asking if you could share some AI sites. To be used in daily oh, life. For, for what purpose? I have already shared. Yeah, you Mew, did. I have shared some interesting website, mubird.com is for music creation. You all can play tonight with Mubird and you can create lots of music. Then there is a website, NVIDIA, where you can draw anything, gar garbled, and it will convert it into a very beautiful picture. And then there is a website called uh, Descript, Descript.com. You can clone your voice or your family friend's voice, <laughs> scare them, or you can use. So I've showed you something. I'll share that PPT also to Professor Arjun and you can, you can refer that. So videos will be there. We have last two questions, one by Vithita and Priyanka. Vithita, go ahead. Um, good evening, sir. Thank you for the session. Uh, my question is related to cybernetics organisms uh, with AI transforming. And recently there was a news that Japanese government ne prosthetic arms, banaya, which is AI modeled, or it learns it on itself how to do that. So uh, what kind of future do we see in that? And perhaps if arms are so they could be a human cyborg itself. So how do we see that? Though I think it is far-fetched reality for now, but not that far-fetched as well. So how do we see that? That is one of the questions I have. And other question is related to, I remember reading an article sometime back related to Interpol uh, talking about policing the metaverse. Uh, so the kind of crimes that could have happened apart from just that data theft is at this point, uh, there are kind, kinds of things that we cannot even imagine and they might be the future awaiting for us. So how does then we look at the idea of the policymakers working in this field of policing the meta metaverse? These are my two questions. Beautiful questions. Both, both, both of these questions are really uh, very, very uh, interesting. And uh, see, so you have given some information, cyborg or... AI generated prosthetic arms or these things are reality now and they'll be much more common in future. I don't see, uh, as you said, that it's not far-fetched. Probably in the next three to four years, we'll see many such things happening around us. The changes will be very fast, very, very fast. Metaverse, it was delayed because of COVID and now it is again booming back and it will also create lots of law and order issues. You are right because of uh, the over engagements of people in metaverse eventually. So you will be able to touch, you will be able to push people, you will be able to feel warmth and other senses eventually in metaverse. So I think a few weeks back, a few months back, I got a news that a lady complained to a police station that somebody tried to rape her in metaverse. And that rape means probably shouting or creating some obscene comments or something. I don't know what exactly was the situation, but it happened. It will become much more realistic in future. So we need new guidelines, new framework, because 
we are not there in metaverse. Uh, we are using some avatars. We are not using our own face. And these avatars will be representing us. And we can have multiple avatars. And these avatars can be cloned, can be stolen. So somebody creates a copy of your avatar and does something and it will be blamed to you because, because of the obvious reason. And that these kind of situations will arise in future for sure. So you are right, we need a dedicated metaverse regulation framework and also to make people accountable so that they should not get away with any situation. This is a clone, sir. It's possible that he did it himself. And after that, he said, I'm going to kill him. So accountability has to be And how will we ensure that accountability? How will we map that incident? Do we need logs from the operators, service providers, that when this person entered into this room with this avatar, how will we ensure that he was the guy who was owning this? Or if it is not cloned or copied, so there are new algorithms coming. Abhi, I'm researching with one few set of interns and we are developing, in, developing an algorithm to recognize a person inside Metaverse through his behavior. Not through his avatar or IP address or email ID. No, we don't need those things. We will recognize you through your behavior because you can copy all other things. You can spoof all other things, but you can't copy the behavior for a longer duration. So the way you act, the way you blink your eyes or your head movements or your hand movements and the way you walk. So all those kind of things will be captured. So we'll see if right now because whatever metaverse we have, it is just based on your head gear. We don't have body suit right now. So we can't capture many other movements of your body. But based on your head movements and eye movements, we are able to achieve a few things. Probably we'll use such kind of algorithms in future to recognize people to avoid cloning and duplications. I think we can conclude now. It's already 8.45. Yeah. And uh, thank you so much, everyone, for the wonderful discussion. I enjoyed your question. Let's wrap it up for the day. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Dubey. I think we all enjoyed it. And it, it's really got us thinking. I think there are some more questions Guys, please keep your questions and ask. Maybe you can send it to Impri and Impri will pass them on to uh, Mr. Amit Dubey. So over to you, Bhanvi. Yeah. So, sir, it was really an informative session and thank you for giving your, your time to us. And we, we wish that you join Impri for future events as well. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Bye -bye. Thank you very much. Now, ma'am, I would request you to give your closing remarks for today's session. Yeah, I won't. It, it's, it's already we are uh, going beyond our time. Uh, I think we had a very interesting set of uh, discussions today. Very interesting questions raised. Um, I think you guys, a lot, lot to think about. And uh, especially putting it into the context of public service and public uh, delivery system, uh, public policy making. How does how will it how will all this impact the, those areas? I think those are things to be thought about. Maybe we'll continue that thinking and the discussions tomorrow's sessions. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Ma'am, with your due permission, I would like to give the final vote of thanks for day two. Please do that. So as we come to the end of day two of careers in public policy and online national monsoon workshop program. A three-day immersive online introductory career counseling and awareness certificate training workshop. I, Bhan B, researcher at IMPRI, Impactment Policy Research Institute, would like to propose the formal vote of, vote of thanks on behalf of IMPRI, New Delhi. We are grateful to our experts for day two session, Dr. Nivita Ma'am, Ms. Urvashi Ji, and Shri Amidubi Ji, for taking out their valuable time and giving us an opportunity to the part, as well as to the participants to learn from this online certificate program. We thank all our participants who have raised pertinent questions and actively participated in today's deliberation. We look forward to welcoming you tomorrow, that is 24th August at 6.30 p.m. for a third day of the certification course by distinguished experts, Mr. Sandeep Chatraji, Mr. Yash Agarwal, and Dr. Nivedama. 
So we are grateful if you are watching us later on YouTube or listening to us on our various podcasts or reading our publications. We hope you continue to join in future to our inquiry where policy talk and where policy learning. Wishing you a good day. Thank you. Thank you, Bhandi. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you, ma'am. Good night.